maximum, as great, high, or as intense as possible or permitted. In many ways, that's exactly what Xiaomi was thinking when it created the Mi Max and now the Mi Max 2. It's a mid-level smartphone with a gigantic 6.44 inch screen and insane battery. I was so intrigued by this giant smartphone that I wanted to make it my daily driver for one month. So for the past 30 days, that's all I used. My name is Andrew and this is my review of the Xiaomi Mi Max 2. The Mi Max 2 comes in at around $259 US, but you can get it on flash sale, so see the links below for the most current pricing. If you haven't checked out my unboxing and first impressions video of the Xiaomi Mi Max 2, I encourage you to check it out before you watch this. The main attraction here is a 6.44 inch IPS 1080p display. It also has a whopping 5300 milliamp hour battery, making this an endurance king. And the battery was so good that I was able to go two, if not three days, depending on my usage, without having to charge. And because the battery is so big, it took two hours and 15 minutes to fully charge the device, even with Quick Charge 3.0. And it blew away its competition, by far. 17 hours and 28 minutes in total. This is the Endurance King. Driving this bad boy is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 got 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. Now that storage is expandable via the micro SD card slot which takes up to 256 gigabyte micro SD cards. And the Snapdragon 625 did well. Everything seemed pretty snappy and the OS seemed very fluid. Even browsing with the Chrome browser there was very little lag if any. And gaming was no problem. But bear something in mind, this is a mid-level phone. As evidenced by the Intuitu score, it did okay. Not quite as good as the leader in this category, the Huawei Mate 9. And it came in second only to the Huawei Mate 9 in the multi-core score of the Geekbench 4 test. It has 2.5D arc glass and is covered in Gorilla Glass 4. Now I have dropped the phone a few times, especially one really bad time where it really fell and I thought for sure that the screen would be cracked, but nonetheless it held up and all it got was a few nicks here and there. And speaking of the display, it's a 6.44 inch IPS display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1080, that's 342 pixels per inch and it has a 74% screen to body ratio. The maximum brightness is 500 nits and it really is good for indoor and pretty much for outdoor use. The contrast is excellent, the color temperature is decent and it has a very average Delta E score. But nonetheless, this is a pretty sharp display, especially for a 1080p display. The blacks are very deep and the color seem very vibrant to me. There is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It worked well for me. There was no interference. Actually, I was really pleased with its performance. And it has an infrared sensor on the top, and I found myself using it more than I thought I would. Great for controlling your TV and your home theater system in your living room or your bedroom. I found that the Mi Remote app worked well and really was very handy. There's a speaker located on the bottom of the device, and there's also another speaker located in the earpiece for stereo sound. I really do like these speakers. They're loud, they got good bass, and I think the mids will came out really well. Overall, I'd have to say these are some of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard on a Chinese smartphone. And the fingerprint sensor is located on the back. Setup was easy and it worked extremely well, registering my finger pretty much every time I used it. On the right hand side, there's a power button along with your volume rocker up and down. And on the left hand side is your dual SIM tray. Now one of the SIMs can be swapped out for your micro SD card slot. I'm located in the US and I'm using it with my Project Phi SIM. 
working pretty well, but although I'm not getting LTE speeds, I'm getting HSDPA+. And to be honest, those speeds are fine. But check with your carrier to see if it supports the LTE bands. Now when I ran the speed test, I got 4.72 down and 1.2 up. Not the best in the world, but certainly you can watch YouTube, you can do any kind of browsing and streaming without any issues. I had no issues with the Wi-Fi evidenced by the download speeds, but the upload speeds are more of indictment of my Cox Communications internet rather than the device itself. Now I'm sure all of you want to know how the camera is. Well, on the back it's a 12 megapixel shooter, it's f2.2, it does HDR, it does 4K video at 30 frames per second and 720p video at 120 frames per second. I thought the image quality was okay. I don't think it was the greatest I've ever seen. Low light situations were sort of hit or miss. Color reproduction was okay. I thought this camera was not the worst I've ever seen. It certainly can get the job done. Keep in mind, this is a mid-range level smartphone, so I'm not expecting the best camera quality, and it really shows. But it certainly is not the worst I've ever seen. I would say at best, it's okay. Now, as far as video quality is concerned, I think with the proper lighting, it actually did pretty well. Here the lighting was not so great, but you can get an idea that the 4K 30 frames per second is certainly usable. There's a 5 megapixel front facing webcam, and it was okay, it's good for Skype, good for video conferencing when you need it, certainly will get the job done. So this is the front facing camera on the Xiaomi Mi Max 2 with that front facing 5 megapixel camera. Make no mistake, this is a very large phone, but it is surprisingly manageable and you can use it as your daily driver and I did so for 30 days. And with that extra screen real estate, I found myself using it in place of my iPad or tablet when I wanted to use something with a larger display. It runs Android 7.1.1 and the MIUI 8. Now the beta version of the MIUI 9 is available to this device, but I stuck with MIUI 8 to see what the average user would get. And it was okay. If you like the iOS-like environment, then you all, you'll like the MIUI 8. And many of you have asked, this is the dark OS theme. I got it from the theme app on the device itself. It really looks nice in my opinion. So to bring it all home, can I recommend the Xiaomi Mi Max 2? And the answer is absolutely. It's definitely worth your money. This is one great giant smartphone, although I understand some will be turned off by that large display and the fact that you really can't put it in a normal pocket. But if you want incredible battery life, sharp display, overall good build quality and looks, and great price, this may be your ticket. I'm going to give this an 88%, making this worth your money. So what do you think about the Xiaomi Mi Max 2? I really like it. I think it really is a great device. I think at the $250 or less price, I think it's an excellent value. I like its display, the full HD display, 6.44 inch. I understand it's big, not for everyone, but for those in the market for a large smartphone, this certainly fits the bill. The audio is excellent. The battery life is outstanding, phenomenal battery life in fact, and really is a very good two to three day device, believe it or not. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Have you picked up the Xiaomi Mi Max 2? Do you have the original version? If you have both versions, which do you like better? I think this is a big improvement over the last generation Xiaomi Mi Max. And I think this one really takes the cake. And I really can't wait till the next version comes out, maybe with a higher res display, with that giant battery. I'll sacrifice an hour or two of battery life for the higher res display. But I kid you not, this is a great display in its own right. 1080p is nothing to sneeze at. It's a, it's a very nice display. And this is a great mid-range phone in its own right. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.